In this video, I wanna show you how to choose what to work on in your business to grow your revenue quickly. If you're struggling to decide where to focus your efforts for maximum impact, then I'm here to guide you through the critical areas of your business that demand your attention. We're talking about lead generation, lead nurture, sales, fulfillment, and retention, AKA the pillars of revenue growth. But here's the deal. It's not just about knowing these areas, it's about strategically knowing when to focus on each to push the revenue of your business through the roof. And together, I want to explore each component and its role in your business's financial success. And if you stay till the end, I've got a killer tip for you. It's a simple yet game-changing strategy to identify which areas to prioritize for rapid growth in your business. So let's dive in. By the way, if this is our first time meeting, my name is Emmanuel. I am the founder of Square One Group, and this channel is all about empowering founders and solopreneurs just like yourself with systems to grow and skyrocket your revenue. Listen, and everything in these videos, they're not concepts, they're actual methods that we have implemented successfully. There's no guessing work in any of the stuff that I'm gonna be going through today. These are all strategies that you can apply to achieve new degrees of success in your business. And the strategy that I'm gonna be sharing with you today is something that I learned and I use successfully to scale my business. I've also applied the same methodology to other people's businesses and they've all seen direct increases in revenue. Listen, it's all about knowing where to put your effort, but more importantly, when to not only grow, but to grow smartly and sustainably. So let's dive into these pillars and start transforming how you approach your business's growth. Now, I want to start by talking about a common roadblock that I see many entrepreneurs making. It's this perpetual state of uncertainty about where to direct their time and effort. In your business's daily grind, it's real easy to get lost in endless tasks. But here's the question. Are these tasks that I'm working on really boosting my revenue? And this confusion, it leads to analysis paralysis or being so overwhelmed with options that you end up doing nothing effective at all. And many founders, they just end up spreading themselves too thin across multiple roles, doing way too many things. And not only does this slow their growth, but it also risks burnout. It's like pouring water into a leaky bucket without effort or direction. Now, the key isn't just to work hard, it's to work smart. And I say this because you need to focus on pinpointing the key areas that we need to optimize so we can significantly ramp up our revenue. All right, now that we've identified the problem, allow me to introduce a framework that will help you decide what to focus on in your business to grow your revenue. By the way, shout out to one of my mentors, Greg. He's the one that taught me this. It's been a game changer. You see, your business has five main key areas. Lead generation, lead nurture, sales, fulfillment, and retention. And you need to take a systematic approach to when and how to tackle each. So let's talk about each one of these key areas for a second. Let's start with lead generation. Ask yourself, how effective is your current lead gen strategy? Are you attracting the right audience? And are these leads or those leads turning into actual prospects? Then there's lead nurturing. This is about asking yourself, are you effectively nurturing leads to the point where they're ready to make a purchase? Next, we have sales. And this is about evaluating your sales process. How effective is it? Are you closing deals? And more importantly, how many prospects do you need to talk to to close them? Next is fulfillment. This is about reflecting on your product or services delivery. Is your fulfillment process smooth and does it lead to customer satisfaction? And lastly is retention. How are you able to retain customers to get them to spend more money with you or refer you more business? When you start critically analyzing each one of these areas, you start to identify which ones need your most immediate attention. Now let's dive deeper into each one of these key areas to really understand what's working and what is it. I learned this framework from another mentor on Mintaki and it goes like this. We need to look at each area of our business and give it a grade. In this case, we're gonna be grading it as a problem, a weakness, a strength, or a superpower. Then at each tier, we're gonna tie a specific KPI or a key performance indicator to give you a clear picture of what's working and what isn't. So if we're looking at lead generation, the KPI that we're measuring is a leads generated. So this is essentially how the grading system works. If you're generating less than five leads a day, that means that it's a problem area. Five to 10 leads a day, uh, it's a weakness. 10 to 20 leads a day, then uh, it's a strength. And then 20 plus, definitely a superpower. So the key here is to ask yourself the question, how many leads are you generating per day? Next, let's look at lead nurturing, where we're essentially measuring the amount of follow-ups that we're doing here for all of our leads. Now, if we're following up less than 10 leads a day, it's a problem area, 10 to 20. Uh, it's a weakness. If we're following up to at least anywhere from 20 to 30 leads a day, 
then it's strong, 30 plus, definitely a superpower. So ask yourself, how many follow-up conversations are you having daily? Next is sales. This is where we measure close percentage. I like to think of this as for every 10 sales conversations that you have, how many are you closing? So let's say that out of 10 conversations, you're closing less than three. Uh, that means it's definitely a problem area. Uh, three to five, it's a weakness. Six to eight, it's definitely a strength. And eight plus, it's a superpower. By the way, rule of thumb here is as a business owner, you need to be closing at 80%. If you're not, then you definitely have a problem with your sales skills. So that's definitely an area that you can uh, maybe do some reps in and improve. Next, we have fulfillment. And this is measured by a thing called NPS or a net promoter score. This is a survey that we essentially send to our clients and we ask them to scale us from a uh, one to 10 scale. Now, the thing here is that anything uh, under a six needs work. So it's a weakness and a problem, it just needs work. You gotta improve your fulfillment process. If you're getting a six to an eight, it's strong. An eight plus, it's a superpower. Lastly is retention. This is where we measure a thing called churn. Now, follow me on this because there's a little bit of math here. This is where we take the number of clients lost during a period of time, and then we divide that by the total number of clients at the start of that same period, and then we multiply that by 100. And this gives us percentage. Now, if uh, you got above an 8%, that means that it's a problem area. Five to 7% means that it is a weakness. Three to 5%, pretty strong at it, 2%, or plus, or I should say minus, uh, then it's definitely a superpower. By the way, all the clients that we work with, we actually workshop what I just went through with them in a more detailed framework. Inside of our program, it's called Community Builder. If you're at all interested in looking for some help, setting up some systems like this, then hey, there's a link in the description below for a quick 10 minute brainstorm session. Go ahead and click it and uh, let's see if we can help you out. Okay, now that you have a clear understanding of where each area of your business stands, it's time to start to prioritize. This is where strategy comes into play. You see, all of these areas of your business, they are all dependent on each other and you can't skip around and try to tackle each of these problem areas by however you feel on whichever day it is. There's actually a sequence of how you need to attack each one of these areas. Okay, so here's an example of a graded you know, uh, business. And the first thing that we're gonna look for in terms of what we're gonna tackle is what is the lowest grade that we got? Which area is underperforming the most? And in this particular case, uh, lead nurture is our biggest problem area. So this is actually gonna be big priority number one. Now here's the part where many people get this part wrong. You see, if the problem area is in one area, then the way that you actually address it is to actually fix the area before it. So for example, if lead nurture is the problem area, then usually the way to fix it is in your lead generation. And when you fix that, what essentially happens is uh, the lead nurture problem ends up fixing itself. Now there is one exception, which is lead generation, because you can't go backwards on lead generation. If you have a lead generation problem, then that means that the problem is actually your offer. So what you should do is head back over to fulfillment and you know, look back at what you're offering the marketplace. Now the goal here is not to achieve superpower status uh, in every area overnight, but by focusing your efforts on one area at a time and steadily improving each part of your business, it will start to scale. It, the, you'll start to see the effects start compounding and overall this will lead to uh, revenue growth. By the way, if you found this video insightful at all so far, if you uh, would be so kind as to click that like button, subscribe button, the bell icon, you know, all that good stuff. Now, remember earlier in this video, I mentioned this actionable strategy that will quickly improve your business. Well, here it is. It is a very simple framework and it is about speed. I call it the three week rule. Now, ideally you're gonna implement some sort of strategy to improve an area of your business. But the main thing here is that you're gonna test one thing at a time. Super important. Test one thing at a time, not multiple things. Because when you test multiple things at the same time, it really muddles the water and you don't get a clear picture of the data of what is actually working and what is not. Now, here's the key part to this. 
When we're going to test this one thing, we're gonna test it for three weeks. Week one is where we're gonna implement the thing to establish a baseline to see where we are with it. Then on week two, we're gonna compare that data to week one. Did it improve? Did it not improve? Did it stay the same? By the way, up is a good thing, but we're gonna keep testing. Now, if it's the same or the numbers actually decrease, it's a clear indication that you should start considering a completely different test or strategy because what you might've thought of, it's just not working. Then on week three, we're gonna compare the data to week two. If it continues to improve, then it was a successful implementation of your experiment or of your strategy. And let's move on to the next thing. But if you didn't improve or things stayed the same, you should go back to the drawing board because that means whatever you decided to do, it just didn't work. Now, when you adopt a systematic approach like this, you're not just shooting in the dark, you're actually making an informed data-driven decision that will cumulatively lead to significant growth in your business.